Well, you've seen the state of our country in the last few decades. You see what's going on in the presidential election, and you're probably asking yourself, can we restore America? The promise of America is that with ambition and hard work, anyone can rise to the top. But now the promise has been broken, and we've become an aristocracy where rich parents raise rich kids and poor parents raise poor kids. We've been told that the changes are structural, that there's nothing we can do about this. But that doesn't explain why other first world countries are beating us hands down on the issue of mobility. The way back, restoring the promise of America. Who wrote this fabulous book? Dr. Francis H. Buckley. Dr. Buckley is a foundation professor at George Mason School of Law, and he's here today to tell us about his book. Welcome, Dr. Buckley. Carlos, thank you for having me. Great to be here. So this is a wonderful book, The Way Back, Restoring the Promise of America. First thing I have to always ask is, what motivated you to write this book? Well, there were a couple of things, but the most important thing was um, just raw numbers. Um, I was really surprised to see how we are no longer the mobile country we imagine that we are. I mean, everybody grows up figuring this is a country where whoever you are, wherever you're born, you can get ahead. And and we're not like that anymore. I mean, we used to be like that. We used to be that kind of a country, but but now we're we're uh, an immobile country, and and that explains I think the results of the 2012 election, and I, it also explains what's happening in 2016. I mean, people want to return to that kind of a country, and to the extent that uh, people are not not trying to answer that question, uh, they're failing in the polls. Let me ask you this question. Can we define mobility as you are saying, stating in the book? Yeah, it's, it's really pretty simple. It's just a question of the correlation between the uh, earnings of fathers and sons. I mean, it could be daughters, but they use fathers and sons. Or it could be mothers, but it's fathers and sons. And, and when you look at it that way, um, we're not the country of mobility. I mean, if you're really mobile, there, there wouldn't be much correlation between how sons do and how fathers do. But we're a country where, as you say, you know, rich parents raise rich kids and poor parents you know, raise poor kids. And the country of high mobility now is uh, now there are countries like Denmark and Canada, and, and, and we're just not there. We're, you know, we're, we're up there with England, right? We're, we always thought that we had left class distinctions behind in Europe. And uh, and it's not so. Now you know most of the European countries are more mobile than we are, and that's that's devastating because the idea of America is precisely that, you know, wherever you are, you can get ahead. That's the promise of this country. It's the vision of Abraham Lincoln, and it's been betrayed by uh, an ossified society, a set of laws that get in the way of people trying to move up the ladder. Now, that's one of the premises you give in your book, isn't it? It's the, the, the ossification of laws, as you mentioned right now. What other things are causing this? Well, immigration is a big one, okay? And, um, you know, what, what we're doing is we're taking in a cohort of immigrants that have lower skills than Americans, which, which isn't the highest of bars, by the way. And their children are earning less than the kids of Native Americans, and their grandchildren, ditto, right? So, the, the, you know, the, the waves of immigration are producing more immobility, and you have to ask, why are we doing that? And, and one reason is because, well, if you're an aristocracy, that's just what you want. I mean, you do not want a mobile society. You know what you want? You want maids and gardeners. Uh, the other countries that beat us in terms of mobility are countries that have a very different kind of immigration system. So, you know, my example is Canada because that's, that's you know, the nearby country and it's most similar to us more than any other country. And they've got, um, now here's what they do. I mean, they're, they're very liberal. Canada's very liberal with respect to refugees, taking in a bunch of Syrians. Um, but with respect to people who overstay their welcome, they just deport them. And they have a system geared towards economic migrants. In other words, the primary question is, is are you going to add to the wealth of, of, of Native Canadians? And that's just, you know, we, we don't do anything like that. Canada de definitely does have a different policy. 
Yeah, it does. And, you know, the funny thing is everybody, you know, kind of figures, oh, that's a more liberal country. Well, it's not really. I mean, it's it's in immigration, for example, it's it's much more conservative in terms of the rule of law. It's much more conservative. Uh, and it's it's also got a, an educational system that beats America hand down. And I think the secret up there is more competition. Right. I mean, uh, they don't have the barriers to state aid to parochial schools that, that one has in the United States. So therefore, you have more competition. And someone, uh, you know, uh, people, empiricists who've studied this say that if you could somehow raise American test scores to the Canadian level, it would basically wipe out the the, the national debt. You know, that that's how big the effect is. Wow. So it's these. See, this is what's huge. Okay, and conservatives who obsess over things like entitlement reform, they're missing the big picture. I mean, the big picture is. Um, promise, uh, you know, where everybody can get ahead. Uh, I mean, some people, one, one comedian said they call it the American dream because you have to be asleep to believe in it. And that realization, I mean, I think helps to explain the earthquake of the 2016 political campaigns, right? I mean, on, on the left, you have Bernie Sanders running against a tinge with corruption, Hillary Clinton, and on the right, you have insurgents, um, you know, notably Trump, but I guess you could say Cruz as well, who who are running against a party establishment. And 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 as for the party establishment, I mean, you know, the perception is they'll take their orders from the Chamber of Commerce too quickly, too readily, and and, and as a consequence, they'll play to the special interests. And you know, the ordinary Republican voters get this. I mean. You know, there's sort of an official conservative group of intellectuals who think they can define conservatism, but but the reality is the big issue is corruption, the rule of law, and 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 the emergence of a class society. And those are real issues. That's an interesting thing, is it looks like conservatism at the moment at least is being redefined. Yep. Well that's great. I mean, you know what? We're we're at a moment where People are really concerned about corruption and virtue, and we we saw motion, we saw that before in the revolution, right? The, the the patriots were the party of republican virtue, and their enemy was what they saw as a corrupt British government, and and so something like that is happening in American politics right now. The old left right distinction, which was you know went to things like entitlement reform, is dissolving. And it's been replaced by a virtue corruption axis. And and the guys who are running on the basis of, I'm going to wipe out corruption, are the guys doing well? I mean, um, that's certainly true of, of, of Trump. And, and on the left, Bernie Sanders, uh, golly, who would have ever, fi- nobody figured Sanders would do well, except, He's running against Hillary Clinton. So there, there, there are similarities between Sanders and Trump, right? And, and here's, the, here's, the, here's the comparison between them. Both of them want to return to an America of equality and mobility. But Sanders would, and that's, those are kind of socialist ends. But Sanders would pursue socialist ends through socialist means, and Trump, well, I'm not sure, okay, but I, you know, one way of looking at it is he would he would pursue socialist ends through capitalist means. He's certainly capitalist as compared to, to Sanders, but I, but both have a vision of America as uh, as a virtuous, non-corrupt society, and and I think that resonates with people who are sick to death with Washington and the lobbyists and the special interests. Um, uh, who could, you know who could be enthusiastic about that when you when you read about you know deals made uh with special interests with thousand page bills being passed with uh, some republicans seemingly in in cahoots with all of this uh then you understand why why you know why why Washington is so unpopular and why congress is is you know incredibly unpopular and why you get uh, why you get these insurgents I don't think it's unhealthy. I think it's I think it's healthy. No, I think you're absolutely right. We have about two minutes left. 
unfortunately. We're going to have to bring you back, Dr. Buckley, to continue this conversation Surely. in a longer format. Um, so we have a yeah, lot of areas to only cover. If you, only, only if you call me Frank, hey? Oh, okay, Frank. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Um, yeah, we definitely have to bring you back to discuss. Because I wanted to also cover, we don't have time right now. we got about a minute and a half, but I wanted to discuss more later with you about the immigration, uh, maybe even Samuel sure. Huntington's theory um, that he brought up years ago. Um, but what's the main takeaway from your book that you want everybody to know about in our audience? I want to try to redefine the promise of America and conservatism, and I, I guess not just conservatism, but an ideal that would appeal to all Americans, which is the country that we left behind where everybody was mobile. And that it, it's a country defined by Abraham Lincoln more than anybody else. And we've lost that. And we'd like to get it back. We see glimpses of it in the, glimpses of it in the movies of uh, Frank Capra and so on. And now we become tawdry. We become a little dirty, and we'd like to clean ourselves. That's pretty healthy. Absolutely. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the author, Dr. Francis H. Buckley. His new book, "The Way Back: Restoring the Promise of America." Pre-order it now. Thank you again, to, uh, Frank, for being here. We truly appreciate it. Carlos, been fun. Thank you so much.